What's up everybody, how's it going? Well, fall fishing is coming right around the corner and in all honesty, I can't believe how much this little guy gets eaten. So I figured I would show you how to tie this. This is my short bus. I have my other fly called the Magic School Bus, which in fall fishing absolutely crushes it. This guy gets eaten twice as much. So I called him the short bus. He's tied a little bit differently, so I'll go ahead and go over the material involved, and then after that, we'll get tying this fly. It is a reverse hook pattern, so make sure you pay attention to that when you tie it together. But as for the material, you're going to need some sunburst yellow blood quill. You're going to need your yellow saddle hackle. You're going to need your pumpkin colored silly legs you're gonna need some more strung marabou in rusty brown and then as far as dubbing goes you're gonna want golden brown dubbing and you're gonna want your uv light yellow dubbing okay you're gonna need your red glass beads and your standard piece of articulation wire this one is about four to five inches long so you don't need it as long. I do use two beads on this particular pattern. And for the hooks, I use the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger in a size six for the front hook. And I use the Gamakatsu C14S in a size eight for the back hook. And then when it comes to the dumbbell eyes on this particular pattern, I use the small v-shaped bodied tungsten eyes okay as for thread you can use any thread you want i'm personally going to be using big fly in black that's 400 denier just to go ahead and wrap this up i pretty much got rid of my spool of gsp i don't have enough to tie this fly so i'm not even going to start with it but i'm going to go ahead and get started and show you how to tie this And there's one other material you're going to need before I forget. You're going to need your whiting rooster neck. Okay, you're going to want this one in red. It's got the red and the black bars on it. This fly does have two of these tiny little feathers in it. And when we get to it, I'll show you what, how they go and how they're tied in. But for the tail on this thing, you're gonna get some of your rusty brown and you're not gonna build this fly up all super bulky like the rest of the flies that I've got when it comes to like the joker pattern and stuff like that. So you're gonna grab one piece of rusty brown just like that and you're gonna tie this in roughly a little over to about the size of the shank of the hook just like that so there's the tail right there so this fly during spawning season they go absolutely crazy over it they just absolutely love this thing and every time I've thrown it, it's getting eaten by all kinds of size fish. Brown trouts, rainbow, it doesn't really matter. They all devour it. So I usually half hitch all my thread regardless. If I'm going to do any type of dubbing loop or anything like that, I always half hitch my thread. Now this does not have a counter rib wire in it. So because it does not have a counter rib wire, you're going to want to go ahead and get your saddle hackle tied in right off the bat. And with these ones, I just tie them in from the tips. Anytime I don't put in counter rib, I tie off from the tip of the feather. Just like that.
get my hair clip because sometimes they just work better than the material clips when it comes to holding material. So for the body, you're going to want to use your golden brown dubbing. Okay. You can get these out of the Ice Dub Dispenser 2 from Hairline. They actually have both of the colors for this fly in this one dispenser, which is really awesome. You're not going for a really big body on this thing. You're actually going for a really small body. And there is no taper like the rest of my flies. I don't build tapers into my flies. They just naturally taper by the material that I put into them. So, and if you're always a little iffy about how much dubbing to add based on how big of a loop you have got you can always add more it's not that big of a deal because once you're done you just pop it back out and you separate it and you can save it for later make sure this is spun nice and tight just like that and then go ahead and wrap your body forward right to there and call it good. Do another half hitch. And that's mostly just to hold your material in place so that your thread doesn't back off when you do these turns. So, go ahead and get your hackle, spin that on, I usually do about four or five turns and then that's about it with the hackle, you don't need much more than that. Pull that back, try not to capture those last couple of fibers. Okay, it's that easy. And then all you have to do for the rest of the back hook is just add your rubber legs. I use two rubber legs on the back and I use two rubber legs on the front. So, it gives it that little bit of distortion in the water. We all know fish love rubber legs, so you just add these in just like that. Do the same thing you do with all the rest of them. Get a pinch wrap on that if you have to. Get those adjusted, just like that. Come back. Figure eight them. Get that one wrap in front, and then give it a pull, and you've locked them in place pretty much. Just like that, give it that good pull. One more wrap in front of it, and then go ahead and whip finish, because as you see, you're done with the back. Okay, now for these rubber legs, I cut them off literally, as you can see on this fly right here, I cut them off just past the tail, just barely past the tail right here, just like that. And that's all there is to it for those rubber legs. Now, the front hook, like I said, is the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger in a size 6. So you get that one ready to go. Go ahead and put your dumbbell eyes on it right off the bat. Now this hook is designed to ride hook point up. Okay. 
So you're going to tie these onto the top of the hook and you're going to leave them on the top of the hook. You're not going to spin them around to the bottom because you want the hook shank where the barb is and all that stuff. You want the barb up and you want the shank running down. So I kind of, uh, if you're familiar with Mike's meal ticket fly on how that's tied, that's kind of the idea I was going for with it. I was going for one hook up and one hook down. Main reason why is because it's such a small fly and I really did not want to lose the hookup ratio on it, but I did still want the articulation in it and I didn't want it to be just like this normal woolly bugger style fly. So I went ahead and switched the hooks on it just to keep it an articulating fly. Just like that. Give that a good pull. And then like I said, this hook is gonna be going up, okay? So make sure you don't mess this up when you tie this in because if you tie this into the bottom, your hooks are gonna be so close together, you're gonna lose the hookup ratio on one of the hooks. So always make sure that when you tie this together, you have your back hook pointing up and your front hook is pointing down with your dumbbell eyes on the top. You can see it right here in this fly. Right here, you've got the one barb going up, just like that, and then the other one is down over here, and the dumbbell eyes are on the bottom, so when this thing swims, it swims just like that. And this is another one of those scenarios where you just wrap around the eyes, you don't worry about going through the eye of the hook because this wire will not fit through the eye of the hook. So you don't have to worry about doing that. Make sure you get a good grip on that. Come around, do your wrap around the eyes, just like that. Give that a pull to cinch that down, just like that. And then this is absolutely a fly where you're going to need a combination of your rubber band and your hair clip. Or just your hair clip. Now, there is one thing you got to pay attention to and I'm going to back off here for a second because I actually caught a mistake. And this is one of those things, don't ever settle for a fly when you tie it together. If you make a mistake, back off, fix your mistake, and then go from there. And my mistake was I did not get my bead length that I needed on this fly. So I'm going to back off just for a second. Got to talking a little too much and wasn't really paying too much of attention to it. But go ahead and adjust that length just like that. Perfect. Okay. Just like that, okay? Now I can go back forward and redo my wire tie-in. So, let's get that taken care of. I'm gonna cross over right here. Grab my articulation wire. Pull it up, just like that. Pull it really good. Wrap right in front of it, come back and give that a really good pull just like that secure that in place and then go back around my eyes just like that give those a good pull all right perfect Okay, 
and then you can wrap all the way back just like that if you want to so then you're going to take another small piece and as you can see on this it's not really that big on that articulation joint right in there i know it is a little hard to see but you can see there's that tiny little bit on the articulation joint cover and that's what you're going for so you really do want a little small piece you don't want anything super big or super crazy and if you've got a lot of this little itty bitty stuff like that one right there you can go ahead and use that to tie in it's absolutely perfect yeah that was junk call your material when you need to so there's actually a decent one right there and you literally only want to tie in just enough to cover just like that you only want this little itty bitty piece in there and I lay that right on top kind of spread it all the way around the hook just a little bit and then come in and grab it just like that because I want it to wrap almost all the way around so I'll lay it on top and I'll kind of push it around the sides just a little bit and you get that nice little cover right there okay and at this point you're gonna go ahead and tie in your other hackle feather Tie it in by the tip. Just like that. Clip that off. Now sweep your material back, go back to where you started, right there, and then go ahead and build your dubbing loop. Just like that. Go all the way almost to the eyes because you're gonna be tying in some more material up here. You got rubber legs you gotta tie in. You've got a couple other things you got to tie in. So pay attention to stuff like that. Now this is where it gets a little confusing and you've really got to pay attention, okay? Because you can tie this fly upside down very easily. It's not really going to matter as long as you get it all right. But if you tie it upside down, it's not really going to be riding the right way in the water. You're going to have... Your material that you think was supposed to be on top will be on bottom and it'll just end up a total pain so really pay attention to how you're going to be doing this and make sure that you are tying the material in in the right area so you want the top of the fly to be the top of the fly not the top of the fly be the bottom of the fly same thing really tight dubbing loop just like that and I mean you want a nice tight dubbing loop you're always gonna have a little bit of these frays but it's not really that big of a deal come around wrap this body up just like that and at any point 
if you are experiencing any problems like what you notice I'm having where your hook wants to shift in your vise, then you can always just grab it, tighten up your vise, and you're good to go. So there's that right there. Okay, now this is where you got to pay attention because that hook point rides up. So first thing you want to do, go ahead and throw another half hitch in that just so that you know you're in the safe zone of it not unwinding itself. Grab your hackle and spin it forward. Just like that. Go ahead and capture that. Snip the rest of that off. Give it a decent sweep. And then wrap back a little bit over that last little bit of hackle that you tied in so that it pushes some of that stuff back. And this is where you're gonna take your sunburst yellow. Okay. And it's also where it's gonna get a little bit interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little piece right here because I really like the way it looks. It's got all those straight tips on it. So I'm gonna use that much right there and that's about it because there's a little bit of that in the fly just in front of this hackle so you're going to flip your vise upside down like this so that your hook point is up and your eyes are down and you're going to put this in and you're literally going to take this just halfway into the cover okay you don't want this going too far back you want that going about halfway into the cover at the most so I'll grab that just like that use a pinch wrap right here it will really help a lot okay so that's in right there Now for the bottom, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and it's because there's two stacks of dubbing in here. There is the UV light yellow and then there is the golden brown dubbing. So right off the bat, the first thing that you're going to do before you even tie in your rubber legs is you're gonna come into your whiting hair right here, your rooster neck, and you're gonna get two of these little small guys, okay? Two of the little ones right off the front of the smaller feather of the neck, and you want them, you want them to match as much as possible. So try to find your two that look like they're a decent match. I got two of them right there. That way you can tie these in and they're going to be the same length. That's one of the key factors about this fly. When you're pulling these out, be really careful. Grab them at the bottom of the stem and yank them out because if you don't, you're not going to end up being able to pull the entire feather out. You'll end up breaking it and you don't want to do that. So for this right here, you want to go all the way into the tail, okay? You want this feather to run back into the length of the tail right about there, okay? Nice and long. So, halfway into the back of the tail, basically. So, if you have to, turn your vise back upside down 
and this is where your rubber band really helps to hold this where it needs to be so measure that get it where you want it tie it right into the side just like that okay you can see how I have that tied in just like that and then come in with your other one and do the same thing on the other side just like that give this a second wrap and if you need to pull these off and down a little bit go for it just like that they're both the same length if not give it a little bit of a pull line them up you can see how they line up into the tail right there and then go ahead and anchor them down really well and then snip off your excess of the feather just like that now you can tie in your rubber legs as soon as I find out where I put them there they are so then you grab your rubber legs and like I said two rubber legs on the back hook two rubber legs on the front hook now these rubber legs they go riding on the bottom so make sure you turn your vise upright go ahead and do your figure eight for your rubber legs put that one turn over them come around them do that figure eight I used to tie in rubber legs totally different and then once Kelly Gallup came out on one of his videos and did this I've never done it any differently I just they set really really well so wrong bottom sorry guys or no that's right see I told you this flight can get confusing why I'm doing a tying tutorial on it I said I would do it a long time ago I haven't showed anybody this fly but I do fish this fly a whole lot and I've got to say every single time I fish it it always gets eaten I mean it never fails this fly is just absolutely amazing when it comes to catching fish it just gets pummeled over and over and over again so now that you've got that tied in you can take some of this light UV yellow and that'll be your first stack of the dubbing on the bottom and you don't need a lot you really don't need a lot okay like you literally only need a little bit of this stuff you don't want a whole lot of this but you're gonna take this fold it in half over your thread and you're going to add that right there just like that go ahead and anchor that in make sure it's good so then if it's a little bit long take it give it a couple of pulls it's not that big of a deal what you want is you want this to literally lay all the way across to the back hook just like that so you don't have to worry about it being too long the dubbing is supposed to stop right at the beginning of the back hook if it's too long trim it out it's not going to hurt it at all give it a couple of pulls just like that once you have that anchored in you want that literally just like that so that when it lays back it lays back to the beginning of the hook now you grab another piece of your rusty brown and 
get yourself a decent one. I really like that one right there. Probably use that for the front of the fly. I don't want something really that big. Find yourself another really good one, like that one right there. Perfect. Right there. That one right there. And even if it has some of this call in it, really not that big of a deal. Just kind of tear that out. Go ahead and get rid of the lowers if you have to. So this is going to lay over top, just over top of your sunburst yellow. Roughly around the same size as the sunburst yellow length. And it's just to kind of add to that sunburst yellow just a little bit. Just like that. Give that a good pull. And then go ahead and hack the rest of this off. Just like that. You can see what's kind of going on here on how it's starting to build up. So that's it for that. And then what you do is you go straight to the front. And this is where you put in your other plume of Rusty Brown. Now this plume is designed to be a little bit longer. You want this plume to go all the way back to the joint. So I'm gonna wet this one. You want this to be a longer plume, okay? You want it to go into the joint, but not all the way back to the eye of the back hook. So for length reference, this forward plume goes halfway in to the marabou that covers the joint of this streamer, just like that. Make sure you got it where you want it and it didn't try to spin on you. Pinch wrapping in front of the eyes can get a little difficult sometimes. Just like that. Snip off that excess. Get some really good sharp point scissors. So you can trim off around that eye if you have any excess marabou left at it. Sweep all that stuff back. Just like that. Go ahead and flip your fly back upside down. Make sure everything is sitting where you want it to sit. Okay, good to go. Good to go. Give that dubbing a little pull off to the side if you have to to recenter it. Okay, just like that. And then this is where you're going to take your rusty brown. And you want just a little bit of rusty brown too. You don't want a whole lot of rusty brown. You're going to use about the same amount of rusty brown as you did your light UV yellow. Now this you do have to do the twist and pull method to straighten out the majority of the fibers. Because you're going to tie it in the same way you did the yellow. Just like that. Set that right in front of those dumbbell eyes. Just like that. And then go ahead and sweep all your material back. Wrap forward all the way to the eye of the hook. Build yourself a nice little cone in front of it. Just like that. And then whip, whip finish the fly. 
cut your legs and you're done okay that's all there is to this fly it wasn't designed to be super complicated it was just designed to be nice and small with almost the same kind of materials in it as the magic school bus but just different enough to earn itself a different name and that's why I called it the short bus Clip that off, double check your lengths, good to go, good to go, give that a good pull, pull out any of that excess, grab your rubber legs, and with these rubber legs you go all the way to the same length that you cut the first ones. You want them going into the back of the fly, halfway into the tail. A good reference point is cut your front rubber legs off at the same distance that you cut your little rooster hackle at. And then you'll be good to go. So go ahead and pull this. And this is what your fly should look like. Just like that. So when this thing, when you fish it, it's gonna be fishing like that. That's how it's gonna ride in the water. This is all going to lay down where it's supposed to, just like that. You're going to have that top hook right there that's going to be able to give you your hookup ratio on the fish. And then if they come and they snip the tail, the top hook doesn't get in the way and they can get hit on the bottom hook if they're just trying to shoot a fly away. But that's literally how it swims in the water. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Tie this up. Give it a shot. I'm telling you, fall fishing this thing gets devoured it is like top of the menu okay so if you got any questions do me a favor leave them in the comments down below if you liked anything about this particular tying tutorial leave a like on the video hit that subscribe button if you're interested in any of my other content including tying flies and other than that share it with a friend and don't forget your notification bell all right i'll see you guys later